Welcome. We've got a ton of great stuff going on tonight, so we'll jump right in. But first, if you missed last week, the Nickinator scored his fourth prize package okay. for his persistent winning. The Nickinator is like that itchy groin rash that just won't go away. Tonight, please, somebody, step up and get your man card stamped and take down the Nickinator. Also, congrats to Greg Cohen, who won the mini pop quiz, scoring a nice National Yo-Yo Museum yo-yo, yanking it out from the jaws of the Nickinator. And speaking of lightning round pop quizzes, I'm going to do one right now. We are going to have two today, two lightning round quizzes. The first is for people 18 and under. We have virtually nobody watching in that age range. So if you know somebody 18 and under, text them, send them a link to the show. Maybe they can win this very cool Lucky's Collector's Guide to the 20th Century Yo-Yo Poster. All the yo-yo legends have it hanging in their living room walls or in their yo-yo rooms. If nobody wins the poster by the end of the show, too bad. Older viewers, please don't put the answer in the comment section. Again, you must be 18 or under to win this one. Here's the question. What is the brand name of the first yo-yo named yo-yo? The hint is the surname is Filipino. If anybody 18 or under gets this or doesn't get it, I'm going to vomit at the end of the show. So I hope you guys will uh, uh, get some good answers in and uh, you got the whole show to get one 18 and under person to answer this. So we'll have another pop quiz sometime in the middle of the show. I'll give you a little hint. It has something to do with the tiger shark yo-yo. And tonight I will be talking about collecting satellite shaped yo-yos and we have an amazing guest. I asked viewers who they wanted to see on the show I have listened, and now I have produced. Dale Oliver, a true yo-yoing legend, the man who started the modern world yo-yo championships. Most consider him to be the father of freestyle play. He's been around so long that he planted the seed for the original tree that was cut down to make the very first yo-yo, and that's a fact. I saw it on the back of one of his collector cards, I'm pretty sure. We will be talking with him and this will come out later in the show. But I have put the question out there, but no response so far. Tell me if you collect counterweights. There is no shame in that. It's just like, it's not like you're collecting Justin Bieber memorabilia. I have questions. You must have some answers. Please let me know. Counterweights. Our celebrity yo yo contest is still ongoing. So far we have zero submissions. And for those educated in Kentucky, that means not, like not from one is one and not from two is two. I could go on ciphering some more, but I think you get my point. There can only be three reasons for this. First, nobody is interested in winning this Cold Fusion Mint GT in its original canister packaging. Highly improbable that that's the case. Second, all celebrities have tiny egos, therefore they don't like the attention and are by nature camera shy. Yeah, right. And third, I cannot verbalize because it has been highly redacted by the federal government. Regardless, everybody needs to get out there and put a yo-yo in the hands of a celebrity and try and win this contest. The rules are on the Facebook page. So I've noticed that some of the yo-yos that I've been picking as our hot picks of the week have sold on eBay, so I don't know if there's any relationship to being highlighted on the show or not, but I'm glad they're getting into worthy hands. And what, may you ask, is a worthy hand? Well, basically, it's somebody who watches this show. Yes, that is that simple. You viewers, by far, are better than everybody else in the world. You are the star-bellied sneeches. You are the one percenters. Except for, of course, Nick, who is like a giant tick on the neck of all of Yo-Yo Talk contests, sucking them dry, nothing for the starving, hungry masses that desire just a wee taste of contest winnings. How do you live with yourself, Nick? This is a true fact. 
Nick has no mirrors in his house because he can't stand the sight of looking at himself. The shame and loathing is just too great. Now, Nick stopped by my house last Saturday to pick up some of his vast winnings. His only redeeming quality is that he does join me for Lucky's Lake Swim. And he also plays underwater hockey, which is also a trait of a gentleman and of class. So I don't really understand why he dabbles in the dark arts in order to get an advantage on all of our contests. But anyway, for those that think you might win the pop quiz tonight, the Nickinator has a little message. I'll be back. <laughs> so anyway, the Nickinator is like the Yu-Gi-Oh! Exodia God card. Very, very hard to beat. Now, if you do have a yo-yo on eBay you think is hot, drop me a line. Maybe I'll post it as one of my hot picks of the week. I noticed that the goodie box of beginner yo-yos finally sold for $275. I think that's a fair deal. And that Lucky E Jadu sold for $14. And I'll talk about something else later in the show that sold. And uh, I think it had a kind of a surprise ending. Where are we at? Oh, well, Nick will be wanting to know what's the prize package uh, this evening. So he's still planning on winning tonight. So here you go, Nick. This is what you'll probably win. Tonight, it looks like we have about 30 items in our prize package. Those are all collectible yo-yos and yo-yo memorabilia. Certainly something to live for or at least watch till the end of the show. So let's check it out in a little more detail and see what we got here. Of course, I'm giving away a Lucky's Collector's Guide to 20th Century Yo-Yos, a signed copy. And based on the current national debt and the impending runaway inflation, you'll be seeing these on eBay in about four years, selling for about $10,000 each. So you might as well get your copy now. And there's also a copy of the Zombie Cause Dictionary, which will be priceless when the zombie necropolis happens. We've also got a headshot yo-yo, which goes along with the Zombie Cause Dictionary. Here we've got a couple of items from the 2004 World Championships. No, actually that's the 2000 World Championship of Hatch and the 2004, that's a Russell yo-yo there. Very nice item. Yo-Yo Space Jam, New Kids on the Block. I'm personally not into them, but this yo-yo will set you about back about 15 bucks if you buy it on eBay. Here's a Hummingbird Rainbow Yo-Yo. This is the Starburst. They made this from 1988 to 1995. It was part of the Rainbow series. Back when rainbows just meant rainbow has a neat little laser diffraction seal on it. Got a nice little Duncan Beginners yo-yo from the 60s mint on card. Off to the right, in the right lower hand corner, we've got a Space Returner yo-yo, which is a satellite shaped, and that is the topic of discussion for this evening. We're gonna talk about satellite shaped yo-yos. This was the big craze right after America entered the space race in 1958. So the early 60s had a bunch of satellite shaped yo-yos such as these by Duncan. You've got a solid color here and a two-tone white and green. I believe the two-tone colors are more valued by the collectors than the solid colors. We'll talk a lot more about satellite yo-yos and how some of them are very, very valued by collectors. Here's a nice Duncan Neo yo-yo. They only made these for about six years from 1989 to 1995. Keep your eyes out for a Duncan misprint of this where they accidentally printed up some fur de -lis seals on the Neo yo-yo. Those are very hard to find. And I am told if you hide it in your armpit, you can shoot little tiny lightning bolts out of your little finger. Uh, I've tried to confirm this. I can hide it in my armpit, but so far I've only been able to shoot out little tiny puffs of smoke from the finger. Here's the reproduction Duncan tournament yo-yo. 
That sells at about double what its original price was. And off to the side there, there's the Hyper Russell Yo-Yo String Pack. Back, back in the late 90s, as I recall, they passed a federal law that said anything that had to do with yo-yo had to have a hyper in front of it. That same law required all girls with ponytails to wear massive scrunchies too, I believe. And this is a Duncan Delicate Wing Butterfly made from 1977 to 1980. Call it Delicate Wing because they have those thin winged veins there and they rubbed off really easy when you played them. The uh, early cards had the $1.29 price tag. The later packs had barcodes because Duncan noticed people were getting barcode tattoos on their skin so they thought they would put it on their yo-yo cards to look cool. And so that's our prize package for tonight. And if you don't like what you see, well, you can just change the channel to look at some other yo-yo show that gives away great prize packages. But before you do that, let's see what the value of this prize package is tonight. Let's calculation. Wow! $312. I think you need to keep watching. Okay, pretty decent uh, prize package tonight. Uh, tonight I'll be talking about satellite yo-yos and I'll be specifically talking about yo-yos that have satellite shapes. Now, prior to 1960, yo-yo shapes, uh, uh, the satellite shapes just weren't a thing. Uh, the United States lost their first satellite on January 31st in 1958. This essentially started the space age for the United States. And just as a little sidebar here, I might mention that my father, John Meisenheimer, happened to be the weather launch officer for the Explorer 1 which was our first successfully launched satellite. Uh, he's in the history books because he delayed the launch for two full days in the face of high-ranking military pressure to change its forecast. But he held firm and the launch was a success. And there is a little bit of history for you rammed down your throat. Uh, you have been educated. So, um, we are going to talk about some satellites now. Uh, set the uh, satellite yo-yos, this is a, a Duncan, if we could get that uh, s uh, s split screen up there. Uh, let me swing this around. Uh, the Duncan released the uh, satellite yo-yo in uh, 1960 at uh, the New York uh, Toy uh, uh, Fair, and it became uh, a popular item. Um, and the Duncan series, uh, once they had named it satellite, uh, it just kind of took on that name, even though these are more flying saucer shaped uh, type of yo-yos. So here are some of the, the, the Duncan satellites. That's the uh, flat nosed or flat top satellite. Uh, this is uh, a screaming sonic satellite, which has never got made. This is how they looked before the paint job and before they uh, put in the, uh, the whistle. Um, here's another, this is the, the solid color satellite. This one is the two-toned, and I think the two-tones tend to, to be more desirable uh, by yo-yo collectors than the uh, solid uh, color satellites. And again, a Screaming Sonic satellite. Uh, those were uh, very popular. Now we're getting to the two what I consider rarest of the Duncan satellites. This is the Duncan centered satellite, and I look for this baby uh, for a number of years. Uh, these are very rare. Matter of fact, I think they actually may be rare, more rare than what everybody considers the, um, the Apex uh, Duncan satellite, which is the Space Seattleite Needle. This is, uh, was released in the uh, uh, World's Fair. Uh, it is satellite shaped like the top of this uh, Seattleite Needle and they sold them at the fair and then in the gift shop for a number of years. Uh, these always sell for a few hundred dollars when they pop up on uh, auction and extremely rare on the card, although the card does exist. Now there's knockoffs of satellites. Uh, this is an Empress satellite, probably from the same period. And you can see that it's a little cheaper made, does not play as well, 
but it's kind of fallen into the collectors want this because it is uh, kind of the perfect knockoff of the Duncan. Then you've got the big D. This is kind of the apex Dell yo-yo. Not only is it a satellite shaped, but it is a glow yo-yo as well. So it's kind of a, a multi-collectible category uh, yo-yo. And as you, uh, Coca-Cola, if you are a Coca-Cola Russell collector, you're probably peeing your pants right now because these are incredibly rare satellite versions of Coca-Cola and Fanta. They came in two Coca-Colas, uh, the flat top and then the round version and the Fanta the same way, uh, rounded version and, and flat top. These are incredibly rare uh, Russell yo-yos. And then modern yo-yos still make them. Here's a, a Diffio in a, a satellite shape. So, and uh, Frank Diffio is going to be on the show uh, in a few weeks. So uh, they still make satellite shaped yo-yos even in the modern uh, world now. So anyway, uh, enough about uh, uh, satellite yo-yos. Uh, Sean, uh, let me ask you something. Are, are, are we doing our uh, next pop quiz now? Is that where we're at? Okay. So we are going to uh, uh, jump in uh, to our uh, next pop quiz. I've got to check here and see what uh, uh, we're going to do here. And right after this, we're going to um, uh, talk to uh, Dell Oliver, who, as I mentioned, is a national yo-yo uh, grandmaster, uh, world yo-yo champion, hall of famer. Uh, and in honor of Dale, we are going to be giving away at this lightning pop quiz a Tiger Shark yo-yo. And that is really cool, but even better, it is signed by the man himself, Dale Oliver. So this is what you're going to get for winning this mini rapid pop quiz. So do whatever you need to do to loosen up those uh, texting fingers. Um, take a little shot of da Jack Daniels or take a huff on some uh, testers glue or uh, just go into a deep meditative state um, uh, because we're getting ready to do it right now. So here's the question. The Tiger Shark Yo-Yo was used to win the world championships in two years. Name one of the two years that it was used to win worlds. First person to answer that wins this nice autographed Tiger Shark Yo-Yo uh, by uh, Dale Oliver. And um, speaking of Dale Oliver, we're going to bring him on uh, right now while we're waiting for that answer to come in. Can we connect? Let's see. Are we all connected there, Dale? Can we bring Dale up? Stand up. Dale, can you hear me? I can hear you. All right, Dale. Well, welcome, my friend. Welcome. We're... Uh, we'll, we'll, What's that? We have a winner already. Okay, well, let's find out who won your autographed yo-yo there. Who, who was that? Sean, let me know. Oh, no way. Is that the mother of Nick? Are you kidding me? Uh, yeah, I can't, I, I can't see the name, but... Uh, okay, Sean is telling me that Patty Grande won, who I... What's that? Patty Grande is the mother of the Nickinator. So this is like bizarre. I, I hear the Twilight Zone music going in the background. So there's something about this family. They're all mecking around in the dark arts to win all these contests. So, well, congratulations to Patty Grande, mother of Nick, the Nickinator. And we'll be getting that information to get you the yo-yo, or Nick will probably stop by the house and pick it up since he knows his way here quite well. So anyway, we've got Dale Oliver here, yo-yo legend, and um, we're just happy to have you on the show. And we want to ask the guys and gals out there that are viewing to you know, chime in, uh, ask some questions for you. But uh, my first question to you is that you are married to a yo-yoing legend and a top legend, uh, Val Oliver, who's probably one of the best or the best female top thrower in the world. So when you're sitting around the dinner table, is it only yo-yo talk? <laughs> what, what do you guys talk about? Well, mostly it's she's saying, don't talk about yo-yos. <laughs> <laughs> well, a actually, that's kind of re we have, refreshing. We have, <laughs> 
We have we have yo-yo uh, free zones in the house. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So so you Spintastics, which you are the founder of, and um, Spintastics has made like over twenty different models uh, of of yo-yos over the years. And, and what year did you found Spintastics? I forgot. 97. 97. Okay, so since 97, you've made like over 20 different models. If you had to pick like one model of yo-yo that you would say of all the Spintastics yo-yos, what would you say that that would be? Well, the Tiger Shark. The Tiger Shark. Oh, okay, great. It's my, it's my, yeah. it's my favorite uh, 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 non response it's my favorite responsive yo-yo. Okay. And, and, and would that be your go-to yo-yo as well if you said, okay, I'm going to just get down and throw a few here and just, you know, pass some time? Is that your go-to yo-yo now? Or is there a, another yo-yo that's your go-to yo-yo? Well, for, uh, for responsive uh, tr play, that would be my, my go-to yo-yo. Uh, for non-responsive, uh, I like the, um, the Space Monkey. Oh, okay, yeah, the Space Monkey. Let me uh, let's see. I, actually, I got one right here. Let me... Uh... Let me pop that up here on the, the side screen here. There you go. There's, there's uh, the uh, Space Monkey. That's the Spintastic's uh, non-responsive uh, version of the, of the yo-yo. So that's his go-to non-responsive yo-yo. Now, um, let me see here. What are other burning questions? Did anybody, uh, does anybody ask any questions? Come on, guys. <laughs> you, got, you got the legend on here. Surely you got some questions out for him. Let, let me uh, let me know. So uh, I, I, here's one of my favorite yo-yos, regardless, is the Terminator, because obviously I love the name of the yo-yo. And um, the Terminator was made for a short period of time, no longer made. But I think it's an interesting story, which actually makes the yo-yo in collectors' minds more collectible. Can, can you tell us a little bit about the, the story of the Terminator and the, the name change? Well, uh... I called it when I when I uh, first came out with the uh, the Technic. I called it the Terminator because I thought it was a neat name for for a yo-yo. And uh, Valerie said, "I don't think you should do that," but I went ahead and did it anyway. <laughs> and uh, I don't know. Two or three years later, the, uh, a gentleman came by. The, at the uh, toy fair in New York, and he was the lawyer for uh, uh, a company that had the uh, toy, you know, the all toys named Terminator, you know, were under their auspices. And so I either had to quit using Terminator or I had to pay him a royalty. I did pay the royalty for one year and, and, and uh, then discontinued it. Okay, well, yep. <laughs> Potential lawsuits uh, sometimes do get in the way of funds. So, <laughs> uh, um, so you know, a, uh, I know there's uh, kids out there or people out there watching that say, hey, I want to be a pro yo-yo player like Dale Oliver, the jet setting, the yachts, the mansions, all that that go along with being a professional yo-yo player. What would you say to a young person that says, what do I need to do to be the next Dale Oliver? Uh, live for another 50 <laughs> years. <laughs> Two, we got a question coming in. Well, well, there. Okay. John Gates has a question for you. Good old John. Thanks for watching, John. What, Dale, uh, Dale uh, John wants to know what year it was that you, that you did the first loop to loop with your foot. I've got a picture of, of me doing it uh, in the parking lot of uh, Lou Newmeyer's oh, yeah. pizza parlor. <laughs> I probably did it before that because I was demonstrating it to somebody, Mark Sitton, I think, and uh, probably in the 90s. Okay. Well, cl close enough, I guess. I, I wish I had a B-roll shot of uh, you doing a loop-to-loop -loop with your foot. Uh, uh, I think I have seen you do that before, and it's a, a, a quite Im, Im, impressive skill. Um, what, what was that other question, Sean? Actually, we've got some more questions. Okay, we've got some more questions so coming the, in. The second one is from Tim Simcoe. Tim Simcoe. 
Uh, what was your, your favorite city or venue uh, when you've uh, demonstrated or uh, been out there uh, showing the yo-yo? You've only had about 50 years of venues to think of. So. Tokyo. <laughs> Tokyo. Tokyo. Oh, okay. Yeah. Tokyo. That was um, when the uh, probably what was that? Ninety eight or ninety nine? When the big yo yo craze? Nine ninety eight. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That was that. That had to be the hotbed of yo yoing in the <laughs> probably the last century. So, yeah. I, uh, that that was uh, certainly a place to be. Well, yeah. yeah. What what uh, what else we got there, Sean? Okay. So. Um, what made you want to start your uh, first yo-yo company? That comes in from Jason. And they also ask you to turn your light on in your room. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay, I'll do that. Yeah, yeah because you, 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 you look like something out of uh, one of the uh, horror films. I keep thinking Jason is going to jump out with one of those... Uh, uh, mask on or something. Oh, that's much better. Oh, we can see Dale, Dale Oliver. You guys just thought it was an audio interview. It is actually, yes, a video interview. <laughs> so that, so what, 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 what made you okay. start uh, go f with your first yo-yo company? Well, I was uh, doing a school program, okay, uh, the science of spin, and uh, I needed a yo-yo that uh, was kid-proof. Oh, okay. <laughs> and not only unbreakable, but kid-proof. And uh, I had a, a break, breakage problem, and I had to quit using some uh, other suppliers because uh, the yo-yos were cracking and, and, and upon occasion shattering. Yeah. And so I couldn't have that when I was doing in-school programs. Sure. So uh, I was kind of forced to come out with my own yo-yo because there wasn't anything on the market that was uh, up to my standards. There are uh, there are Technic yo-yos used by PE teachers all over the country. Oh, okay, great. They they bought class sets and they they do yo-yo uh, units, and uh, those those yo-yos see year after year after year thousands of kids, and they st they're still still yoing. That's they yeah. still work. So speaking of still yoing, what would you say if you're looking at the yo-yo community now? What should we be doing to get the yo-yo mainstream in your mind? If, 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 you, if you were in charge of everything, what would you say to, how do we get the yo-yo back in the public's mainstream eyes? How are we getting another craze like in 98 and 99? Okay. Well, that's, uh, I, I don't think that, that that's ever going to happen. Oh, okay. I mean, that, that, was, the, uh, that was the perfect storm. You know, between uh, between doing school programs and uh, I mean, I don't know. The the story is about five minutes long. You want to hear it? Well, look, may, maybe not. We got one more question, uh, and then we're going to have to probably uh, uh, go here uh, because I know everybody's not at the bit for these uh, prize packages coming up. What what was the last question there, Sean? Oh, great. Rick Wren says he was one of those PE teachers that you were talking about. And he wanted to know how many years you were a Duncan Yo-Yo demonstrator. Well, I started in uh, part time in '55. Started full time in '57. Uh, I worked until '64 um, when they were going to, you know, when they Duncan went bankrupt, and then I started back with them uh, when Flambeau did it in '69 to '74. And then in uh, like 78, I worked with Donald Duncan Jr. But so those first years, it was I was a Duncan demonstrator uh, for all those years. Okay. Basically, I, I had a little the, the little time off when they when they went bankrupt, but it was from uh, 55 to, to 74. Well, so now I, I know you've retired from pretty much from demonstrating. Val's still out there uh, demonstrating, I know, at uh, the schools. But you still sell yo-yos uh, at uh, Science of, uh, uh, I mean, at, uh, let's see, what is the, what, the Science of Swim, uh, Spin, Spin com, correct? Yeah, okay. that's right, so if Science you, of Spin wanna, If you still want to grab a Spintastic yo-yo, you can go to the uh, Science of Spin com, and Dell uh, has them for sale there. I want to thank Dale for coming on the show and talking to us. I know I had to play pretty much hardball with him to get him on the show. 
and I promise to return your puppy unharmed now. Thank you very much. And so we are going to get into one of my favorite parts of the show. We are going to look at the hot auctions of the week. Doc Lucky's Flaming Hot Auction Picks of the Week. Okay, let's uh, jump right on into hot auction uh, number three. Number three, hot pick of the week. All right, very good. Uh, this one actually has a satellite in it, and I wanted to show this auction just because we were talking about satellites earlier. Um, this also has a couple other, these multi-auctions, usually you can get a little better deal. This one has uh, a not a bad seal, and it's $20, and no, no shipping right now. Now it may go up in price, but if you think about it, uh, this particular satellite, one just like this in, in uh, about the same condition or maybe a little worse condition on rimware, sold for $19 the other week. So essentially you're getting a Duncan Gold Seal and this satellite along with that New Day Flower ad yo-yo from the 50s for $20.25. So that's why this is my uh, pick number three. Let's go to pick number two. Number two, hot pick of the week. And here we got another yo-yo lot, and it's got a lot of different things. None of these, I would say, are, are highly collectible, but that Pac-Man yo-yo is pretty nice. Uh, you've got an early Spectra star there. That big D Dell yo-yo is a marbleized plastic, so that's a nice one. But check the price out right now, 99 cents. Now, there's $15 of postage, but if you go through there and calculate what all these yo-yos would cost you individually, unless you're a big-time collector and have all these, this is a nice package. If you bought these individually, you're probably going to spend 90 bucks or maybe even more than that to buy these off individual. Plus, you got to consider all the postage for each individual one. So 99 cents is a pretty darn good price, even with a postage of $15. So that is my pick number two. Check that auction out. And now our number one pick of the week. Number one, hot pick of the week. And it is a Hilo. This is actually a Bandalore. This was made in 1910. This was before yo-yos were called yo-yos in the United States. And I uh, think that any collector out there that's of any serious nature, needs to have at least one Bandalore so they can show people. This preceded the yo-yo being called the yo-yo. Now this was an all metal yo-yo. It came with that metal finger ring. And this is right now uh, at $24.99 with $4 postage. And these yo-yos typically, now I realize this will probably go up in price, but, but keep an eye on it. Normally these sell in the $50 range or higher. Every once in a while you'll score one a little lower. So that's why I'm telling you to take a look at this one. Uh, I think that that is a, a great price right now. And if you don't have a Bandalore type of yo-yo in your collection, uh, this is your chance to, to pick up a Bandalore. So now we'll jump into our scorching score. Mr. Bandalore's Scorching Score of the Week. Okay, this may seem to be deja vu. You say, wait, didn't I see this yo-yo last week? Well, yeah, you did, because this is our scorching score because it sold last week. Thank you, Bob Rule, for, for uh, letting us know that Chuck Sears was a demonstrator, uh, more a top demonstrator, but he was a yo-yo demonstrator as well, and that made this yo-yo truly the number one pick. And the person that bought this actually negotiated a lower price than the $39.99. So that's why this is my scorching score of the week. Thank you, Bob, for sending me all that great information on Chuck uh, Sears. Um, uh, but nice, uh, nice, unusual yo-yo, but with a Duncan demonstrator autograph on the backside. You can't beat that. 
So we are going right into our nasty dog of the day. Nasty, nasty dog of the day. Okay, this is a Royal Champion Tops display box. It's empty. Um, this is on sale now with postage for over 80 bucks. Now, that's a ridiculous price for this uh, box. A lot of people may think, oh, well, this is really rare. It's probably worth that. But there's, there's one on sale right now for, uh, I think, around 20 bucks. I would not pay more than 20 bucks for this box. Yes, it's old. Yes, it's a nice royal box. Got great graphics. But they used to sell these on these big uh, houses that had all kinds of stuff they would sell in bulk for six bucks a box. That was about 15 years ago. And they had hundreds of them, literally. So these are out there. Don't pay this kind of price. Sometimes you'll see this box filled with other yo-yos. I think uh, uh, a while back, I saw a box of these selling that had uh, style 55 yo-yos in it. So people buy these boxes, throw anything in them. So I always look at the box careful what yo-yos are in there because a lot of times it's not royal yo-yos. So anyway, that's, that's my nasty dog of the week. Way, way overpriced for a box that's uh, pretty, uh, pretty common. So now I know everybody's been waiting for that uh, big pop quiz contest. We've got a great prize package, $310. I know Nick is out there just waiting to go. He is like this. Um, so we might as well go on and uh, give the pop quiz and see what Nick is going to win. Doc Lucky's pop quiz. One shot. One champion. First, to answer both questions in the Facebook comments, wins. Get ready. for that answer still waiting for that answer we're getting close ones but uh, not quite there yet let's see where we're at here space Seattleite needle the year of the world's fair and then how many total holes are on the rim edges of a Duncan streaking sonic satellite I know everybody's running to their collections right now <laughs> counting those rim holes counting those rim holes what what uh oh, oh, uh, oh, oh, Nick is out there. He's getting close. So is his mom. <laughs> this, this, this could be a, this could be another uh, Nick and Nader. Uh, oh, 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 oh my God. Somebody, Somebody won? won. You're not going to believe this. Who won? Patty Grande. No way. Nick's mom won? There's got to be some kind of weird, you know, if this was some kind of political thing, people would be doing investigations. There would be House uh, and Senate. Uh, is, is, keep talking for a second. Okay, yeah, 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 Sean is investigating. This cannot be right. How can one family win everything on this show? It makes absolutely no sense at all. Not, Nick is not, he's being beat by his own mom? Oh my gosh, Nick, what's wrong, man? I can't believe this. All right, well, uh, for about the umpteenth million time, either Nick, 
the Nickinator or one of his family members is winning the grand prize. Uh, uh, I can't believe it, but that's the way the yo-yo goes up and down. And uh, I guess Nick will be coming by to pick up his mom's winnings since she's a big a double winner. And I don't believe we had any winners for the 18 and under, so that poster, sorry guys, nobody gets it. Okay, it's been confirmed. Patty Grande is the winner. Let me say this. Okay. Nick was right up and, after her. And Nick answered right after her. So uh, uh, go figure. Well, anyway, next week we've got a great show coming up. I am going to be talking about Pedro Flores, the legend who started the word yo yo on a yo yo. Uh, I've got a little short interview with his nephew, which we'll show. Uh, I did a little trading with uh, Dano. Dano came over to the house, and we had a fun time doing a little yo-yo trading. If you've never traded yo-yos before, I'll, we'll show you how it's done, and it's very simple and easy to do. Oh, so, we, we had a, a message from uh, got a Mother Grande. Oh, a message from Mother Grande? What did she say? She had to be junior. All right. Well, it's bit, Nick and Nader was brought down. Who could bring the Nick and Nader down? His mommy. That's who could bring the Nick and Nader down. <laughs> so uh, we are going to also have a big mystery prize package next week. We're going to have more lightning round uh, quizzes, another great, great big pop quiz, which I guess Nick or his mom will win. So uh, just remember... You can never have too many yo-yos, and we will see you next week, same time, same time.